high alpha damage vehicles are always very popular. The FE2 and 5B183 is the most popular tank in the game, and the E100 is one of the most popular heavies, and it's no doubt in my mind. Both of those vehicles feature very big slaps. But a tier that you don't see too many people talking about in terms of high alpha is tier 9. We have three of the highest alpha tier 9s that we'll be talking about today, and when I say high alpha, I should clarify, I'm talking about heavies, as you can obviously see listed in front of us. Three of the highest alpha heavy tanks in front of you. And uh, these three vehicles are all very unique in their own way, and also really fun to play in. We're going to start with the lowest alpha and make our way up to the highest. So we're starting off with the Kampfpanzer 70, which also out of the three is the best in my opinion. The KPZ-70 really is amazing tank. It has 7 degrees of gun depression, which allows it to be flexible on really any ridgeline. It has great alpha damage, it's got fantastic heat pen, and even solid DPM, especially for the accuracy and just everything else that I mentioned before. The tank's fast, goes 40, reverses at 15, it's got a fantastic power to weight. This tank is easily one of the best tier 9s in the game. Like, that's hands down, you know? I made a video the other day saying the K91 was amazing and why it's the best tier 9. And uh, this tank is also one of the best tier 9s. I mean, it's just incredible. And you're probably going to hopefully see why. I mean, this is a tier 10 matchup. And they do have some pretty nasty tanks, like a 113 GFT. I just hate fighting 113s. It just makes life cringe. That's all it does. But here we go. Let's make our way into the, uh, the crossing up here. And see if we can get some good spots out. We have a Concept 1B... 5A, I mean, our tank, tank destroyers, are uh, definitely worse than their tank destroyer, at least the WZ. Yeah, there goes 600 off my concept, that kind of sucks. BK90, nice, there you go. He overangled his turret, you may have seen, and because of that I was able to slam a premium shell right on in. Alright, well, our Fosh is just sitting out in the open, not really doing much. Okay, well that sucks too. Man, our team is not doing a great job here. However, you can see why I really like the KPZ. The gun hits hard, and it's accurate. I mean, we haven't really missed any shots, which is really good. And you know what? I'm going to give that concept some credit. He's doing a good job holding off that WZ. He's getting bleeds into him as well. And those are really the two most important things that I want done when, obviously, having a teammate hold that haul down. So I'm kind of hoping that the 50B pokes, but it looks like he's probably not going to do that. The uh, concept's going to be holding off the WZ, and I can't obviously do diddly squat to the WZ. So for now, we're kind of just waiting, and we're going to see if that VK90 decides to poke, or I don't know. There's not really much else to do. Um, there is one play I can make, but as you can see, patience is key, and... Waiting allowed us to get a free shell onto the enemy E75. And I think if that E75 tries to send my teammate, I will support him. So, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I am going to support him. There you go. Nice 637. WZ does shoot me. Hits me in the hall, but it's worth it. Just saving our Concept 1B allows the Concept to continue to hold the spot he's in. Which is obviously huge. So, that's all pretty good. And if the concept, yep, he's going to get right back there. That works all very fine and dandy. WZ doesn't have the shell on me. Unfortunately, it looks like our concept is going to meet his end. And he does get cleared. But now the 5A's decided he wants to go in. And same for the VK90. Well, we are going to aim in on that VK. Oh, that really sucks. Again, I don't want to put myself in a situation where... Oh, man, our team's just really stupid. Yeah, great job, Foss. YOLO in after he's dead and fire a 20 damage high explosive. You got him good. Oh, boy. All right, well, uh-huh, uh-huh. I literally can't pen the WZ anywhere. It's not the tank's fault. It's the WZ's, as I mentioned. It's just an overpowered vehicle. So the VK90 is obviously pushing up on us, and that's kind of bad. And not only that, but... We're getting pushed by a lot here. We're naming on the lower plate of the VK90. Nice 496 little juicer. But we also have the 50B pushing us, which means I'm definitely dead. Yep. Oh, well. I did the best I could. That's really all there is to say. Um, might be able to get the clear on the 50B. Yep. Bye-bye. There you go. That's actually pretty good. However, we have the VK90 rolling up. 
on us here, and I just couldn't do anything about that. But he's good, though. 3,900 damage, and if this Progetto is good, he is. He gets the clear on the, uh, on the VK, so it could be a win. I doubt it, because they have a pretty healthy WZ left, but it is a winnable situation. Wow, we actually ended up winning that. The Progetto made kind of a bad play and got shot by the WZ. But because the 4005 was right near the WZ, he was still able to push him, clip him, and kill him. So I'm surprised, but I'm also quite happy because we put a lot of effort in that game. We did 3,500 damage, and I think we did deserve just maybe a little bit of a win. So good job from our 4005. It's always good to see a uh, solid teammate. And we won, which was all really good stuff. Unfortunately, our two Foshes had no clue what they were doing and just YOLO'd in and died. But... You can see why I really like the Kampf Panzer 70. The gun is very accurate, and it really didn't miss anything. The only shots we didn't pen were on the WZ, because the tank has the dumbest armor. But, yeah, we didn't really miss any shots, and we had a pretty good result in general there. We, yeah, I, I have no complaints about this vehicle. It's an absolutely fantastic beast. It's fun to drive, it's mobile, it's got a great gun, and you saw why it's really enjoyable. We're jumping up the Alpha now to the uh, BZ-68, and this is a Tier 9 Chinese Tech Tree Heavy. The BZ features the same base damage per shot, or a little less, it's 530 instead of 560, but this tank features high explosive with 170 mils of pen, which deals 600 damage. So that's why I'm counting this as technically higher Alpha, is because you're supposed to fire the high explosive, obviously, when you have the opportunity to pen somebody. So that's kind of what I really like this tank for. Armor-wise, I would say it is worse and better at the same time to the Kampf Panzer. It's worse in the way that the lower plate on this tank is very large and the side armor is pretty easy to catch off guard as well. So those are two things you got to keep in mind while driving this vehicle. But the turret and upper plate are way better than the Kampf Panzer 70. So if you're using the vehicle with its only 6 degrees of gun depression, hiding the lower plate, you can do really well. But you have to drive it perfectly to do that. I really like the mobility on this tank as well. The Kampf Panzer and this vehicle both feature really good mobility. The only tank in this list that doesn't have good mobility is the KV Junior, which we'll be breaking into next. But you can see traverse speed on this tank is really good. And uh, you're going to notice the power to weight is also pretty impressive once we actually uh, get into the straight here. Hopefully this T30 gives me some room. But yeah, in general, I actually really like this tank. And I think it just looks really nice, especially with the camo we have on it. It just looks super duper clean. The gun looks pretty sick as well. So... We are going to squeeze our way over towards the heavy flank. The enemy team does have a 60 TP. They have an Emil 2. So they got some nasties, but I don't think it's anything that really scares me. Um, oh, wait. They do have tanks over here? So why did their 30B... What? I thought their 30B was just running away, but he actually wasn't. I don't know what he was doing, to be honest. Um, we have the IS-8 in front of us, and... I'll notice one problem with this type of vehicle, and that is... Okay, well, the accuracy is another thing, but you'll notice that uh, this tank does not get premium rounds, which kind of sucks. However, it's not too big of a deal, because we are uh, we're doing okay here. We're naming on the lower plate of the 60, especially with the Hess shell. There you go. Low rolled, big time, 90 damage off of our standard, but we still penned him for 510 which is a decent amount, at least, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to be happy, but that was a really, really trash roll. Um, we have the 60, and we have the IS-8. Nope. No cigar. See, if I was in the Kampf Panzer 70 in this situation, I am quite confident that we would be hitting our shots, but this is not an accurate tank, and even with refined gun, it's just... It's not accurate. That's really about as basic as it gets. You're not going to be expecting to hit every shell you fire in this vehicle. But... With a standard HE, we roll a pretty juicer 611 into that grill 15. The 60 TP is getting nuked, and we are going to go wide and see if we can get some damage into the IS-8. All right, well, let's push him right on now. Let's keep on going, and let's see if we can get a little juicer in. Uh, well, we're not able to high explosive pen him, but 572 is still pretty good. What I have noticed is that I have zero support from my team right now in terms of 
um, dealing with this IS-8. I thought that they were going to push the IS-8 with me, but that's actually not what happened. However, it's not too big of a deal because we still have plenty of gun depression to hit the IS-8. And we're actually a much harder tank to pen in a facehug style engagement like this. Oh, and the IS-8's the only one left. Well, that's, uh, that's a pretty easy win. I mean, we didn't do much damage this game, but the game was over in less than a minute, really, from when shots started firing. We uh, we did our job, though. We got some bleeds out. Maybe did over 2,000, which is fine with me. Yeah, 2,300. We blocked a lot, 1,400. You can see the gun on this vehicle. It's nothing incredible in terms of accuracy. 0.34 with refined. And, yeah, I mean, we missed some shots, some of which we shouldn't have. The gun worked fine. The armor's great. That's really the major strength. And the hash. So, I really like the BZ. And this is actually a tank I really enjoy playing. We can see my stats are even better than the Kampf Panzer in this vehicle. So that was just a rather unfortunate game we had in terms of a steamroll, but still a fun battle. We finish off with the KV Junior. This is obviously a KV-2, which has been reskinned. It has the least accurate gun by a long shot, 0.37 dispersion, and that's with refined absolutely trash bag ver dispersion values the tank is slow has a power to weight of 13 so quite a bit less power to weight but it does have 630 damage per shot that's more than the high explosive on the uh the bz68 so that's pretty insane i mean you you cannot compare the two in terms of the damage there but you do trade literally everything else. You don't have any armor. You don't have any mobility. You're twice the size. And your accuracy is terrible. It does have okay pen at least. But man, I, I would be lying to you if this tank did not have its fair share of problems. Bro, can we get a tier 8 battle? Every game we've played today has been tier 10. This tank especially, I'd like to fight tier 8s in because it bullies tier 8s. It doesn't do the best job against tier 10s. So we are going to make our way up here. That's where I'm going to drive at least. I'm hoping that my teammates don't cut me off here. Nope. Okay, we're all good. Let's full speed ahead. Now, even though, as I said, the mobility is not great, it seems like at least on flat ground, we are chilling at our top speed, which is 38 kilometers per hour. But you're going to notice once we start to go uphill, well, maybe if the 268 nudges us a bit, but once you start to go uphill, it loses a lot of that speed and a lot of that momentum. So it's definitely not a vehicle I would consider fast. So we got the Vicar CR who shot our 4005. 50 Bs in the back. We're just going to keep on driving up. I don't know if they have anything else over here. But I really want to just get a nice old juicer out. So let's see. I'm really hoping the 50B pokes this. That's really what I'm hoping right now. I don't know if he's going to. It's really hard to actually tell. Oh, wait, he's backing off. Wait a sec. Wait a second. Aiming. Chonk! 612. Great job, 405. You killed yourself to kill him. Why would you do that? That was just an L. That's just an L trade, especially when I could have shot him anyway. Oh, uh, well. All right, let's reload. We got a couple seconds left. 268's in the open, and we're going to aim it on the side of the 268. There you go, 634. You can see where the alpha damage on this vehicle does feel nice when you do have monkeys like that 268 sitting in the open that our team are somehow bouncing. But that's where the damage per shot does feel really nice because you can definitely connect some of these shots and get some big old juicers out. We got the side of the Conqueror, and... Oh, I should have fired AP. If we had been able to hit a little higher, though, we would have penned him and done a thousand damage. So there was a reason why I fired high explosive. Just a little unfortunate that it didn't end up hitting. Okay, well, we reload again. 60 TPs just sitting here. And I can't really do anything to the 60, to be completely real. Um, we're just going to back up. We're going to aim it on the Vickers. <laughs> that shell went to Narnia, bro. Oh my rat. Well, there goes uh, 700 of our health. Was that the Vickers that shot us again? I don't think it was. I think their TVP is sitting back there and was able to shoot me. You know what, though? Even though we lost a bit of health to that Conqueror, I think he lost a lot more than I did, so I can't get too mad. 60 is moving up, and we're going to load in a heat shell. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
we slammed that heat shell right into the 60 and absolutely nuked what little HP he already had remaining from his previous kerfuffle. So we reload again and we'll have our shell in just a few moments. Three, two, one. All right, let's just uh, try and HE the 60. Perfect. Obviously, high alpha damage means higher HE. And we literally just chunked 300 off of that player. I mean, that's kind of crazy if you think about it. So we're going to reload. 62A is going to push on the Vickers. And I don't know if we're going to be able to get... Oh, what a juicer! I did not expect to hit that. I did not expect to hit that. But we did. So there you go. A uh, pretty solid game for the KV2 Junior. I mean, a lot of people say this tank's awful. I don't actually think it's bad. And you can see it's not bad. When the gun hits, it's pretty dangerous. And... The mobility is not the worst, neither is the side scraping. Like, you can definitely get some decent chunks out. It's not a tank that I would sit here and say, like, oh, you're going to win every engagement in front of you in, but it's definitely a fun tank. So I'm going to wait here, and oh, I was really hoping he would just keep going, but unfortunately not. Either way, 2,900 damage. We got some good juices out this game, and we got a win. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about these three vehicles. Which one of the three is your favorite? Personally, I would have to go with the Kampf Panzer, and then I would say the BZ, and then the KV Junior. The Junior's fun, but it's also very situational. It's not the best tank, but it's definitely not a bad tank. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!